Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we're looking at the Align Array 3. This is a network controlled inclinometer and laser with an optional remote control. These have been purpose built to mount on flown speaker arrays and have been around for a few years now, getting positive reviews from what I can tell. But let me know in the comments if you've used one and how you got on with it. Recently, the folks at Rat Sound and Sound Tools bought out the company from the original developers. Their goal is to bring the future development in-house alongside the rest of the Sound Tools lineup. Thanks to them for this demo system so we could check it out here together. But this is not a sponsored video and everything will be returned to them when we're finished. We've got the two primary components, the laser unit and the remote, but different mounts are also available, including a universal mount, a magnetic mount, and specific mounts for different brands of speakers and their fly hardware. In the past, Align Array has been an OEM supplier for manufacturers like View Audio Technic, who offered these systems as an optional extra with their line arrays when you bought them new. So hopefully we'll get to try some of those accessories out in the future, but today we're just focusing on how the system works. So let's start with that remote control. Now the remote isn't strictly necessary to buy, but it is handy to have. If I were buying this system for a sound contracting shop, I'd probably budget to have one remote for each sound system that might go out on a given day. Once you've flown the laser units, you can carry a single controller from one array to the other as you aim them, and that can be really handy for days when the show network isn't up by the time you need to aim speakers, and it's also a bit simpler to use for new technicians who may not have seen this system before. There we go. The remote is powered by six AA batteries or an external 9 volt DC supply. It provides power and control data to the laser unit then over a network cable with Ethercon connections on each end. Its two line display shows the angle readout and laser control options and a pair of buttons allow you to operate the various features which are mainly just turning the laser on and off and adjusting its blink rate. Without the remote, you can power the laser unit by PoE using a standard power over ethernet adapter or switch. You can then log into the system from any browser on your network and get control access and real-time data from the inclinometer. In the advanced settings, you can also set a unique IP address for each laser and overall getting them configured on your network is very simple, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. Getting back to the lasers, these are class 3A or 3R using the new rating system Green Laser. This one is under five milliwatts and operates at a wavelength of 520 nanometers. It's pretty bright and for reference, a typical Bosch Green 165 foot laser disto uses a 635 nanometer class two laser and those operate below one milliwatt. So this is considerably more powerful and it shows when you use it. As for the inclinometer, it gives you a live readout for top, bottom, left, or right mounting and reports the angle to the hundredths place with accuracy that's advertised to one tenth of one degree. Now I left it connected to a PoE switch and running for a few weeks without a break and it did get a little bit warm but stayed connected to the network and the web app without any trouble. As Internet of Things devices go, these seem very stable and reliable, but again, we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. If you're still watching, leave a like and comment on this video down below, and at the end of the month, I'll pick somebody to send a pair of these bags and a sticker pack to. Uh, you've gotta be in the United States, unfortunately, sorry to all the global viewers, and we'll definitely do this again in upcoming videos. With the basics out of the way, let's go over a couple of questions that you sent in when I first posted about this on social media. First up, is it waterproof or rated for outdoor use? The answer to that is going to be no for the moment. This system, while quite robust, was not designed for use in wet conditions. I've been told they are exploring adding a gasket or otherwise making the system more resistant to water in a future revision. I'm sure that's a priority item for Rat Sound themselves, and I'm looking forward to seeing how they tackle that design. Next question. 
How does it compare to the LabTech Plus system some of you have already used? The LabTech systems are a good bit more expensive and you either have to have their controller or you can add network functionality with an additional box since their sensors don't connect to a network directly. Their sensors are rated to work in heavy rain though and you can add atmospheric sensors for temperature and humidity to their system if you've got a big enough budget. It's a similar story as well when you compare the system to the KSG Recline system. In both cases though, it's somewhat of an apples and oranges comparison with the takeaway being that the Align Array is the more budget-minded option with fewer parts needed to make a working system. Thinking about cost as I disassemble the laser unit, I wonder if they could make this in the future out of something other than metal. It strikes me that one of the most expensive parts of building these would be milling out this block to house the components, but I don't think there's any reason that it needs to be metal. I could be wrong for sure, but it seems like it would be much less costly to make out of something else, especially if you're going to modify the design anyway to keep moisture out. One reason they may have gone with the metal case is you'll see the laser mounted underneath when I pull out the board here, and that's in there very firmly with a set screw from the factory. So that could be part of why they went with such a solid uh, case like this, but it'll be interesting to know if they change that in the future. With the unit disassembled, we can see that the main align array board is branded and there's also a daughter board on the left, which is the Asia RF AWM002. And that's what serves up the web page that we log into and handles the network communications. And it's running a version of the OpenWRT Linux kernel. Now, unfortunately, this is where the align array as a product in 2024 runs into a little bit of a snag. You see, the AWM002 from Asia RF is an older development platform that's no longer supported by OpenWRT and therefore cannot receive the latest kernel updates. Now, the older versions of the kernel, which this is running, contain known security vulnerabilities that OpenWRT says are being actively targeted, potentially by advanced and likely state-operated or affiliated actors. So yeah, that's definitely not ideal, but depending on how you use them and where you put them on your network, it may or may not be an issue that concerns you at all. I emailed SoundTools to ask about this and to see if they were concerned, and Department Head DK said basically that if the lasers are used as intended, that attacks or threats to them will never be possible due to the separated network infrastructure that's typical in live events. He also said that they want to make the next version with more up-to-date chips and software, and I think they'll definitely have to do that if they want to be able to continue to develop and build these into the future. Now, obviously this would not be a concern for anyone that's only using the remote control since there's no network involved and no other devices to concern us. And I'm sure like Dave suggests, most of you who would be putting these on a network have your network traffic broken out into VLANs. You've probably got your Wi-Fi secured so the public doesn't swamp it when a gig starts. So with that in mind, let me know in the comments how you feel about putting hardware with known security vulnerabilities onto your network. It would be easy enough to disconnect them after the system is flown and aimed for sure, but give me your opinions in the comments if this is a big deal to you or what you think a realistic attack vector would look like on an actual system deployed with these on a real event. Disassembling the controller here is actually really exciting because I see a ton of potential where they could make this smaller, they could make it uh, easier to manufacture, they could certainly make it less expensive if they were to make it out of a smaller housing that isn't metal. Again, there may be some specific reason why they went with this case, but I'm excited to see what Sound Tools does with the design going forward, if they're able to somehow minimize the number of batteries involved here, or maybe even a rechargeable option would be possible in the future. Uh, it is tough to get that uh, voltage up for the PoE, but I'm sure their folks are going to be capable of doing something really exciting, and I can't wait to see the next revision. So that's my first look at the Align Array 3 system in its current form as it enters the Sound Tools world. It's always great to look at anything they send over here on the channel, but I especially appreciate the opportunity to share this with you as they are just bringing it in-house and figuring out how to put their own spin on it going forward. I know they'd love to hear your suggestions and ideas for the future, and please do leave any questions you think of in the comments as well, and we'll follow up with answers from them down the line. I hope this was a fun, quick look for you, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.